what category does this molecule fall in? So make sure that you pause the video and use the skills that we've already worked on to do this problem. Try to do this one on paper. Take your time. Okay, hopefully uh, you've given this problem a shot. Now we can go through it together. There's two electrons in this pi bond. And there's two electrons in this pi bond. Now here we have a nitrogen with no formal charge. And even though I haven't shown it, you should know that a nitrogen with no formal charge has a lone pair. Here we have an oxygen with no formal charge, and you should know that even if we don't show them, an oxygen with no formal charge has two lone pairs. Well, let's start with this oxygen here. We know this is an sp2 hybridized oxygen because it has a lone pair and it's connected to an sp2 hybridized atom. So it has one p orbital. What's it going to do with its p orbital? Well, it can put one of its lone pairs in the p orbital. So let's say that this lone pair is in the p orbital. Uh, if you wanted to, you could say that this lone pair is in the p orbital. It doesn't matter. You just pick one. Well then, what type of orbital is this lone pair in? It can't be in a p orbital because we've already used up the p orbital. So this must be in an sp2 orbital. This lone pair is in an sp2 orbital, so these don't count as pi electrons. Remember that pi electrons have to be in p orbitals. So this atom is contributing two pi electrons. This nitrogen is sp2 hybridized, so it has one p orbital. What's it doing with its one p orbital? Well, it must be using its p orbital for this pi bond. We know that pi bonds are formed from p orbitals. So the nitrogen is already using its p orbital for this pi bond. That means that it does not have any p orbitals left over for this lone pair. So again, this lone pair must be in an sp2 orbital. That means that this lone pair does not count as pi electrons because it's not in a p orbital. So how many pi electrons do we have total? We have four electrons in the pi bonds. One, two, three, four. This lone pair also counts as pi electrons. And there, this lone pair does not count as pi electrons. So in total, we have one, two, three, four, five, six pi electrons. That's how many electrons are in the overlapping p orbitals. So this molecule is aromatic. This is a good problem to review some of the skills we've been going through for remembering that not all lone pairs count as pi electrons. On this oxygen, only one of the lone pairs counts as pi electrons because it only has one p orbital. And this nitrogen, uh, this lone pair does not count as pi electrons because it's already used its p orbital for the pi bond. Try this example. This nitrogen has no formal charge, so we know it has a lone pair. This nitrogen has no formal charge, so it has one lone pair. Now, sulfur is in the same column as oxygen. We know that when oxygen has no formal charge, it has two lone pairs. And since sulfur is in the same column as oxygen, when sulfur has no formal charge, it also has two lone pairs. The sulfur is sp2 hybridized because it has lone pairs and it's connected to another sp2 hybridized atom. Each of the pi bonds has two pi electrons. This nitrogen has used its p orbital for the pi bond so the lone pair can't go in a p orbital. So these are not pi electrons. Same deal for this nitrogen. This sulfur can use one p orbital for one of its lone pairs, but then it has no p orbitals left for this lone pair. So only one of the lone pairs here counts as pi electrons. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six pi electrons. And the molecule is aromatic. Something I'd like to point out on this molecule is 
it doesn't matter where you draw the lone pairs. Here's what I mean by that. Here's a way that you might sometimes see this problem appear on a test question. Uh, you might see one lone pair drawn inside the ring, so to speak, and one lone pair drawn outside the ring. So what's the difference between the lone pair inside the ring and the lone pair that's outside of the ring? Answer, uh, that's a trick question. There's absolutely no difference between them at all. There's no significance to whether you draw a lone pair inside the ring or outside the ring. I'll say that again. There's no significance when you draw your picture to whether you draw the lone pair inside the ring or outside the ring. The only reason why oftentimes you'll see problems where one pair is inside the ring and one pair is outside the ring is because just that way there's more space for both lone pairs. If we tried to put both lone pairs on the inside, you can see there wouldn't really be enough space to just write them both. And um, so if we put one on one side of the atom and one on the other side, it's just easier to write them both. Um, but the way that we're writing this has nothing to do with how the lone pairs are actually arranged in the actual molecule. So we're not trying here to show what the actual geometry of the lone pairs is. We're just trying to write them down so we can see how many lone pairs there are. So remember again, it doesn't matter whether we draw the lone pairs inside or outside the ring. For example, for this nitrogen, a second ago I had the lone pair drawn outside the ring. Now I have it drawn inside the ring. What's the difference? There's no difference at all. It's just that for some reason I decided to draw the lone pair here, but again we have the same outcome. These are not pi electrons because the p orbital has already been used for this electron over here. Try this example. Well, we know this carbon is sp2 hybridized. Well, actually, let's first uh, find the lone pairs. When sulfur doesn't have a formal charge, it must have two lone pairs, just like oxygen. And remember, there's absolutely no significance to where you draw the lone pairs. If you want to draw the lone pairs like this, that's fine. Or if you want, you can draw both lone pairs outside the ring. There's no difference between those two ways of writing it. We're not trying to really show where the lone pairs are. We're just trying to show how many lone pairs there are on the atom. Nitrogen has one lone pair. This nitrogen has one lone pair. And again, what's the significance to the fact that I drew the lone pairs here inside the ring? Why didn't I draw them outside the ring? And so there is no significance. I didn't draw them outside the ring because there wasn't really uh, a lot enough space on the board to draw it outside the ring. But there's no significance to where you draw the lone pair. You draw it wherever you have enough space. This carbon is sp2 hybridized. So this sulfur is also sp2 hybridized because it has lone pairs and it's connected to an sp2 hybridized atom. So this nitrogen is also sp2 hybridized because it has a lone pair and it's connected to an sp2 hybridized atom. And for the same reason, this nitrogen is sp2 hybridized. So the molecule is completely conjugated. We have two pi electrons in the pi bond. The sulfur can use its 1p orbital for this lone pair. So this lone pair does not count as pi electrons because it can't be put in a p orbital. This nitrogen can put its lone pair in a p orbital, and this nitrogen can put its lone pair in a p orbital. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 electrons in p orbitals, which means 8 pi electrons. So this molecule is anti-aromatic. 